got a few more pieces to the puzzle here there's a guy named Noah in uh, Richmond that has a little performance shop there fortunately he had a uh, a steering rack for me an F body water pump an F body balancer and the ICT billet low mount alternator bracket and then the uh, the joint and he welded on a, a 10 an oil drain for me so yeah now these are the motor mounts I'm going to use on my cross member these are going to change it to pretty much an LS cross member but you got to have the steering rack because the LT1 won't clear those motor mounts and then um, I bought the F body motor mounts that go on the uh, block and I hope I got those the right way but they'd only fit one way so let's throw some of these parts on it greased up right here and then I pushed it up on there looking at the difference between this one and the truck it looks like just this snout parts shorter all right so now what I've got is I've got these bolts this big bolt with an assortment of washers on it and um, I probably got too many washers but uh, that's probably ain't the best way to do it but uh, I'm just going to thread that in there like that and keep threading it in till that bottoms out if it bottoms out we'll add more washers but uh, that bolt's so big I don't see there being any problem but this thing you have to torque it down to a ridiculous amount I'm probably going to have to buy that piece off eBay that holds the flex plate so the motor won't turn over because I don't know any other good way to wedge something in there and I guess hold it up against here but you know this cover is aluminum crack crack the cover I don't know but I'm gonna put it on as far as I can like this anyway what them six washers actually got it on there pretty far I mean it's almost up to the, the seal like you can see where it was installed before we're almost there then we'll take these bolts out I think I bottomed out the bolt so we're gonna put these other four washers on there and do it again then we'll take this bolt out and then we'll put a new bolt you're supposed to replace this bolt anytime you take it out then torque the yield bolts that it went all the way on that's it all right we'll take this bolt out <coughs> i'm not going to torque it just yet because there's a you have to put a you have to put a big torque wrench on here and then a cheater bar on it to get this to torque I, I, I if i remember correctly i think it's like 240 foot pounds which is a crazy amount of, of torque i i guess the hub seats that thing that that the oil pump rides on that's the only thing i can think of why you would torque that that high but yeah we're going to put a new bolt in it and then i'm going to go ahead and put the water pump on actually i'm going to i'm going to see something first well apparently you're supposed to use the old bolt and go to 240 foot pounds my torque wrench only goes to 150 i've got another one in there i'm gonna see how high it goes but either way i'm gonna wait on that i'm gonna get that piece that bolts to the starter and holds the flex plate before i do that you're supposed to use the old bolt and go to 240 pounds and then you're supposed to use the new bolt and put it at 33 pounds and then go um 140 degrees so i actually need to put the pickup tube and everything on first because i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to get that pickup tube with the timing cover on so let's do that first we're gonna build the pan i screwed this thing in i put this on 
I wonder if I could get one of those with a hole in it for the uh, oil feed line for the turbo. Now we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I can easily reach up in there and take that off and put another one on. If I had to screw that in, I had to put this on. And there's a gasket under here. And it looks like this only goes on one way. So make sure you... The gasket and this. So make sure you line all that up. But yeah. Let's put the splash shield in here. Besides the... Uh, Pan bolts, that's all the bolts I got, so I guess that's it. I tightened all these up pretty good. I still need to tighten that one up. I'm gonna put the pan on. It's kind of hard to hold the pan and tighten that stuff. And uh, also, we got a 10 a.m. hole drain. Uh, hopefully, the starter don't go back that far. I, I don't think it does, so it should be good there. So let's put the gasket on and throw it on. We also got to put our drain plug in. And then we'll tighten that. Something I've noticed on this one. It does not have the low oil level sensor hole. It sure don't. So I'm glad I didn't order that already. Because so I was going to order one of those in a knock sensor last night. And the reason I held off on the order is because I didn't know if I needed to order one of these or not. And that guy said he had one. So, so all I need is a knock sensor. So these are Allen head screws. So I looked down in there with the light and just made sure my rubber seal was lining up. And it is lining up. So we can go ahead and tighten these bolts up. I don't know if I said it or not, but lube that seal up. I just used Vaseline. You can use oil though. Looks like that went in there good. Now we can go ahead and put our windows tray bolts in. I didn't put them in first. Because I thought I was going to. I wasn't sure if I was going to reach that. But those being Allen head screws. That made it easy. Oh. I had to make a long story short. I fought with this pan forever. I was trying to use this uh, truck windage tray. And um, they specify a certain windage tray you have to use with the um with this full pan and um i just modified the truck intake or the tr truck windage tray to look like the one that i was supposed to use um with this uh with this oil pan but i fought with this thing forever <laughs> before I, I figured out i had to alter that windage tray because what was happening was the windage tray was pushing up on the pickup tube in the front and then making it making the uh, pickup tube too high and then causing it to hit the bottom of the pan. I know it's hard to tell in this picture, but put a straight edge across the um, top of the pickup tube, put the gasket on there, measure from the top of the gasket up to the top of the pickup tube and see what your measurement is there. Then also measure from the, um, the bottom of the pan up to the top rail of the pan and see what your measurement is there and then subtract the two and you should have three eighths to a half an inch. If not, then you're going to need to make some adjustments um, because it needs to be that pickup tube needs to be three eighths to a half an inch from the I'm sure how good you all can see that. But that's the windage tray it's supposed to go in that pan with that pan. If you'll notice it's only got four. It only goes four four. And then this part isn't here. So let's go see, look what I did. What I did is I cut this part off. This part right here was hitting the pan right there. The pan's notched just to clear the stroke. And I guess a 3.62 stroke's the biggest that pan to clear right there. So those rods go right up against the pan just about. So I cut it right here, just like the windage tray that they recommend for this. See, one, two, four bolt holes. Mine went all the way to five. And then I even notched it right here. I probably went too far back. That definitely needed notched in this area to clear the dipstick tube. So that's it. Now let's put the whole pan back on here. I swear it's the last time I'm taking this thing off. 
y'all like and subscribe and have a great day and uh, I'll keep putting videos out on this and get it finished up.